Welcome to the Six Figure Business Mastery Podcast, where every week, Kirsten and Jeannie dive into the essential topics to fuel your business growth. From copywriting to course creation, mindset to video marketing, they've got you covered. Tune in for expert guest interviews on all things marketing and business, and learn how to work on your business, not just in it. So get ready to unlock your business potential and take it to the next level. Welcome everyone to our newest episode. I'm Jeannie and I'm here with my amazing business partner, Kirsten Graham. And today we're going to talk about why you might want to start a podcast for your business. So welcome, Kirsten. I'm happy to have you here. We always have such a good time and great conversation. So I'm excited that we're doing videos. I mean, as much as I love having guests here, this is going to be so much fun. So it's so interesting when you think about starting a podcast as a business owner or as an entrepreneur, why would you do that? And the other day I was at a networking event and I was just having this fantastic conversation with a woman who has a bookkeeping business and she's in the process of getting her CPA license, but her partner does investment and he already does tax returns. And she was telling me that the reason why she had added bookkeeping on was so that they could have bookkeeping, tax returns, and investments because it that's all tied together, right? You can put money into your investments to cut down on your tax liability. So she was just talking about why they set their business up the way they did. And I was talking to her about networking because that's how we met. And I said, oh my gosh, I said, have you ever thought about starting a podcast? And she said, no, not really. And I said, well, it would just give you this great opportunity if you started a local podcast to interview all of these other amazing business owners who are ideally your perfect client, right? And so we ended up just having this conversation and Jeannie and I think we hear this quite a bit that starting a podcast is a lot of work, right? And so it was one of those things about, well, it can be a lot of work, but in this day and age, there's so many things that can make it a lot easier. And so we were talking about that. And the first thing we started talking about with automation. I think about this one, I have to laugh because when we first started our podcast, we would talk to someone about being a guest on our podcast and we would get really excited about that. We'd pick a date with them and then we would send them a form that asked them for their bio and their talking points and a headshot. And inevitably, maybe 50% of the people, is that what you would say about 50%? Yeah, probably about 50% of the people would get it right and get it to us on time. So that meant you were chasing it or I was chasing it or one of our team, our VAs was chasing it. And it just became very frustrating. And it really, I feel like it took a lot of the joy out of doing the interviews. I feel like it, it, it added a stress. So when we started to lean into automation, which is my first point for you guys, is to lean into automation. When we first set up our funnel for getting guests booked on our podcast, it was literally like, oh, like we've arrived. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the clouds parted and the sun was shining because it's so simple to invite guests onto our podcast. We send them the link. And they open up that link and they pick the date that they want. And then before they can confirm that date, they have to fill out the form, which means they have to upload their headshot and give us their bio. And we have a few other questions in there. But what's amazing is then that guest goes automatically onto our calendar. They automatically go into our CRM. They start getting the reminders and the confirmations. It's very easy for them to click that little button and put the podcast interview um, date onto their calendar. So we literally have very little time invested in getting guests booked other than us finding the guests that we want to have on the podcast. And we have a very small no-show rate. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's because we. the other thing that we do is when they answer the questions on the form, we send them the answers so that they remember what they put in to the form. Because we've all done it. We put things in the form and we didn't remember. And then we also send it to them right before the interview. So we're just reminding them again, here's what you told us you're going to talk about, or here's what you told us about X. Yeah, that it, it's so amazing now and so easy to have someone on our podcast and to have all the information that we need. Yeah, and it's so funny because I guest on a lot of podcasts and I often wish I got that form because, you know, we have lots of different talking topics that I do. Outsourcing is a form of self-care. Why leverage video marketing? Like we just have, you know, should you be a guest on podcast? Should you start a podcast? There's so many different topics that I speak on. If I don't have some information about that ahead of time, I don't always remember what the topic's going to be. So I love the fact that we felt that frustration ourselves from being guests on other podcasts and we decided to eliminate that issue. 
but we get so many compliments. We have so many guests that are like, your process is so easy. And that's what we want, right? People are taking time out of their busy schedules to be a guest on our podcast. And now we have two podcasts. So we want to make it easy for them. We value them. We appreciate them. We want them to come to the interview relaxed and excited, not stressed out because they couldn't find the link or they can't remember what they're talking about. So yeah, so I feel like it's just been amazing. Like, how do we ever live without automation? It's definitely easier and quicker. But to your point, we do get a ton of compliments. And in fact, I had one lady who came on and said, I knew this was going to be very professionally done because I could tell by the way that you treated me as a guest before I even met you by sending me all the information I needed. Wow. And that, yeah, that makes us feel really good. And it's just automation makes our lives easier. And it does, it can make you look like a rock star. So if you want to start a podcast yourself, definitely lead into automation. That would be my, our first big tip for you. So the second thing that I think is important is outsourcing an AI, because there is a lot of work that goes into producing a podcast. For us, we have our team. And so after we have interviewed the podcast, it gets uploaded to a Google Drive folder where the team grabs. They do all of the editing. We do a lot of heavy editing for our YouTube videos because we train virtual assistants for our clients and we're often using our content to train them. We want our video our YouTube videos, which are our podcast interviews, to be visually interesting. If someone's watching it on YouTube, it doesn't just feel like a podcast. It feels like a video. So we do edit those somewhat heavily. So I, I think that's so important is to realize that it takes time to produce a podcast. And then when you think about AI, it used to take a long time for the virtual assistants to clean up the audio. And now it's so easy because they can run it through AI and that can really help with the audio. And I think everybody always gets a really big kick out of this is that I talk really quickly, which I'm sure you guys have figured out by now if you're listening to this interview. And Jeannie's a little bit more, she talks lower, a little more structured. And so our team knows sometimes they speed her up and sometimes they slow me down. So it sounds like we're talking more at the same speed, which I think is hilarious. And I think they all get a kick out of it when it's part of our instructions for how to edit our audio <laughs> is if Kirsten's wound up and speaking really quickly and Jeannie's laid back and speaking really slowly, feed Jeannie up and slow Kirsten down so they sound like they're on the same page. That's so true. That's so true. I'm used to teaching. And so I like to speak slowly and articulate. So anyhow, yeah. But when people watch videos, they, I know Kirsten and I are guilty of this. We'll watch it at 1.2, 1.5 speed so that you can get through it quicker, but you get the information you need. But yeah, AI and outsourcing is amazing for podcasts because not only do, does our team take that podcast and edit it, but they also create social media posts. They send it out to our email list. They put it up on our website as a blog. And then the next step is that they have to upload it to a software that will then send it on to Apple and Spotify and, and all the other platforms. Yeah. And I think that's my other point for all of you is why should you consider starting a podcast? It gives you, like Jeannie said, it gives you a ton of content. The, our virtual assistants, we end up with little TikTok videos and stories and shorts. And we just end up for, with content for all of our platforms. But what's really cool is our guests end up with content for all of their platforms. So you have to think about this. When you have a guest on your podcast, and if you make them look good, which is our, always our goal is to make our guests shine, is that they hopefully will be very excited about the interview that they did with you. And then they will want to send it to their email list. And they will want to share it out on their social. And that's that's really important because that can really help your podcast get traction. And so I feel like it's just, I love that book, Go Giver. And I feel like it's kind of that process, right? I know we were talking to another guy the other day who also is a huge fan of podcasts and he helps his clients with that as well. And the whole concept of giving to other people first, which is everything we do is value-based content so that you're giving to your ideal clients so that you're helping them with the intention that it will build in trust. And then if they have, if you do something that they need, they're more likely to reach out to you and work with you. So we want to make sure our guests are providing great value and coach them on how to do that. And then making sure that they, again, feel fantastic about the content and they want to share it. I'm going to circle back up into leaning into automation because once our podcast is ready to go live. The week before it goes live, one of our virtual assistants goes in and tags that guest, meaning that in the software, they tag them that, that their video is going to go live. And that starts a whole new sequence of emails that go out to that client. And it says, hey, your video is going to go live a week from today. We're so excited and fantastic. And then over the next couple of days, we send out a couple of other uh, videos reminding them of how they can use 
their podcast to grow their business, use it to market themselves. Because again, we have guests who have a podcast or have been on a lot of podcasts and they know all the things that they can do with it. But then we also try to give people a chance who maybe have never been on a podcast or have been on very few. And so we want to make sure that we're educating them on all the things that they can do with it. So again, that's where automation kicks back in, which we love. (laughs) Yeah. And it's just a reminder. Everybody needs to be reminded that A, you're going to be, this is going to go live, but don't forget to tell everyone about it. And which is great for us because people hear about it, but it's great for them because it makes them, like you said, we like to make them shine. So it makes them look good. So it's just prompting them because they're not all marketers like we are. And so they don't just may not think, oh, my they might think, wow, my podcast is going live. That's so cool. Now you need to tell everyone about it, right? Yes. And we, again, we get so many people who, again, email us back or send us a text or call us after their podcast goes live or they'll hit us up on you know, Facebook. And they're so thrilled and they're so grateful. And that, I didn't expect that. And that made me just feel so good. And I know when I have the privilege of going on someone else's podcast, I am very grateful and I really enjoy the conversation. And that's going to lead me into my next point, which are guests are more than just guests. And what I'm mean by that is what Jeannie and I have found going to like PodFest and different things around the podcasting community is that people who are really into podcasting really are about community, which has been amazing. And so that's something that we have really embraced and that we really love. So when we're talking to other people that have podcasts or have multiple podcasts, they really are people who want to give. They want to put good content out into the world. They want to build great relationships with their guests. And so here are some of the things that happen with guests that we've had on our show. Some of them have become clients, which is ideal, right? So if if we have something that they want they need and they're an ideal client, then we can have that conversation with them. We have actually purchased things from guests, but the timing was just perfect. They came onto our show when we had maybe had just been talking about doing something or needing something. And that was what they did. So Jeannie and I have purchased podcast guests. We've also done collaboration. We end up with guests that have very similar audiences to ours, but sell very different things then that opens us up to this great opportunity to do collaborations with each other. So whether that is us putting an ad inside of one of their podcasts or then putting an ad inside inside of one of our podcasts, which we haven't done yet, but we're working on that. I'm excited about it. So it gives us a great way to, to work together, to help each other, to lift each other up. So I really feel like that's been really an interesting part of this journey that, again, I don't think that we were expecting, Jeannie. Yeah. Oh, I've met so many amazing people just through the podcast. And by the end, I'm like, wow, I think I need that. And they've just been so gracious because they're grateful for us to bring them, put them in the spotlight. And yeah, I've just, it's been so much fun just to get to know people, to learn what's out there. It's inspiring too. It's so many people out there helping other people, whether it's businesses or personal and just the amazing resources that we have. And and we're fortunate enough to bring them to an audience like you. And so again, after our guest has been on the podcast, again, we lean back into automation. We automate and we move them over in our little pipeline in our software. And that triggers a thank you to go out that day. If for any reason someone does miss a podcast episode um, interview, which doesn't happen very often, we move that over to a no-show column, which would then send them out. Hey, sorry, you couldn't make it. We know sometimes things happen. Life can get in the way. You know, if you ever want to book again, we're here, that kind of thing. Because we do not know that sometimes things just happen in life. And a lot of times we get back, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I didn't put it on my calendar or whatever the reason was. It happens. So when you think about starting a podcast, and I'm going to circle back to the, the woman I was speaking with who has the bookkeeping business and the taxes and financial business with her partner, by getting involved with other local businesses, she is actually able to spotlight fantastic businesses within her community. She's able to interview people who could be her ideal client, or she may be interviewing somebody who sells a product or service that she and her partner need at that time. I think when you think about starting a local podcast, if you're in a business, Jeannie and I can, we work with clients all over the world. So that's a little bit different. But if you're thinking about a local business where most of your clients are local and she can actually work with clients outside of the area or she in that way, but they really focus on local businesses. That's always been their focus. So it gives them this great opportunity to offer something to business owners that other bookkeepers and financial planners are not. So it gives them an opportunity to shine in a different way. Because when we think about our value proposition, or if you're out networking and you're thinking about your 30 seconds or your elevator speech, or how do you connect with people, whether it's online or offline, sometimes 
just doing something that no one else is doing can make a huge impact. So we talked about it and she was, we were talking about how long does it truly take to do this? And I said, it takes a little while to get it up and running. But I would say for you and I, Jeannie, most of our six figure business mastery podcasts are around 20 minutes long. And you and I usually jump on Zoom ahead of time and have a conversation and make sure we read the form and we're really prepared for our guests. And then we usually chat with our guests for a few minutes. Then we do the interview. And then sometimes we chat with our guests afterwards because there's just such a great connection. But we only allot one hour for that entire process. So we never, and sometimes it's 45 minutes. So an hour to 45 minutes is what we dedicate to that episode. Then Jeannie uploads it as a general rule. So she uploads it to the team and then they take over from there. So as far as how our participation later is, yes, we generally do connect with our guests on LinkedIn or other places. So Jeannie and I focus on staying in relationship with them. But as far as the production and everything else with the podcast, we really don't have a lot more time in it. Now, the reason for that is we do have an operation manager who manages all of our interns and she signs off on the edits and everything that they're doing. So we no longer do that. So I explained to the client or the potential client, this bookkeeper, that what would happen is the video would be edited and she would get to review that and see what she wanted changed or what she loved. And then after that, she would get to see the social media posts. And so she could approve those. And then she would see how the email was set up. So she really gets an opportunity to look at and approve all of the content before it goes live. And again, Jeannie and I have a very detailed process for how we do that um, with our team and how we coach our clients to do that with their virtual assistants so that they're very efficient. So I said, for you, you might have three hours a week in an episode in the beginning. And then eventually that could go down easily to two hours a week. So if you think about this though, if you go to a local networking event, you are driving to that event. So let's say 30 minutes with local, you're there for an hour and a half, that's two hours, and then you're driving home. So two and a half hours is generally a networking event whether that's a BNI or a chamber event, and they can be a lot longer. Trust me, they can be longer. But if you think about it, when you go to a networking event, I did a presentation the other night at 10 minutes to speak in front of like 40 people. That was fantastic. But once that's done, it's done. But when you have this awesome podcast interview, that podcast interview is working 24 hours a day, seven days a week for years to come, because people can find this six months down the road, six years down the road. So you're creating evergreen content while you're building relationships with your guests and showcasing what you do. So I just feel like it's a very efficient way to use your time. It really does focus on building relationships, which I think we're all about as people do business with people they know and trust. And I feel like if you can lean into automation and outsourcing and AI, and you really have a structure for how you're going to do your podcast, it's really quite easy. And it's a lot of fun. I think that's the other thing, Jeannie. I don't think you and I, either one, had any idea how much we were going to love podcasting when we started. No, absolutely. Like I said, you get to meet so many amazing people and you were comparing it to an in-person networking and it, it's I know it's on Zoom or on some other type of device software but it still feels very personal because it is a one-on-one -on -one or in our, our case sometimes it's two people two of us and one guest but it's very intimate and personal and so you really do get to spend some good quality time with someone and get to know them I love that yeah. so I, the other thing is that so I, I told you guys Jeannie and I have this podcast which is Six Figure Business Mastery on YouTube at Six Figure Business Coaching but we also have another podcast called Blueprints for Brilliance Coaching Insight where we really just focus on interviewing coaches about their journey into coaching and, and why they chose coaching and tips that they give out to help people. So it really is interesting. Right now we do five podcast interviews a week. <laughs> yes, we do. And when I say we, it's like I'm French. We, I am on two of those with Jeannie and Jeannie is actually on all five of those. So where we divide and conquer is Jeannie hosts the coaching podcast generally herself. I do fill in from time to time or pop in from time to time, but I actually guest on other people's podcasts. So that is another strategy in another way that you can leverage podcasting is to actually guest on other people's shows. So I'm going to end there. But what I'd like to say to you guys, if you'd like information like on outsourcing, we have a fantastic free guide. It's called Double Your Income with a Marketing VA. We'll put it in the show notes, but you can find it at outsourcingforbosses.com. And I'll talk to you a little bit about outsourcing and AI and all the things that we're talking about. And if you ever want to have a conversation about starting a podcast, because we help our clients with everything, the automation, the outsourcing, who do you get as guests, everything. How do you want to, I'm running over here. We have a client right now and she actually works with people who are retired. They're generally older in life. They're older. She wants to make sure that being old is not a bad thing. Like being older is a wise, you're wise. You've been around for a long time. So she is actually interviewing people who are in later stages of their lives who are doing interesting things. There's a woman that I'm going to introduce her to who got her um, PhD in her 80s. Love it. So how many people that are doing wonderful things later and later in life because we have, we live longer and we have all these amazing opportunities 
communities. And a lot of that is due to technology. So she was talking, we were talking about her podcast and she has this amazing vision. I think she has vision that you and I just don't have, Jeannie, but she is going to create her podcast as a kickoff from the late night show. And I think she's going to name the podcast. She hasn't confirmed this yet, but the not too late show. So meaning it's not too late in your life to do really cool things. And she just has this great vision for how she's going to have the intro. And we are so excited and thrilled because she's excited about it. And so I am, I feel so privileged that we get to be on this journey with her, get to help her all along the way with everything from the intro and the music and the types of guests she wants to have on to the virtual assistant who's going to take care of producing everything for her. So I'm looking forward to that that podcast going live in the next couple of months. That's going to be amazing. And I can't wait to hear her guests as well. So stay tuned. We'll update you. And when that actually goes live, because there's so much to it. And like you said, I just love seeing how excited she is to get it out there, to encourage people, to inspire people and to bring people on who are inspirational as well. Evidently, we qualify as old enough to be on her podcast. So <laughs> there might be one of, there might be a couple of interviews of us in our playlist before long on her podcast, because yeah, I guess we qualify. I'm okay with that. We do. Thank you everyone for being here. We are so grateful that you joined us for this episode. And if you have any questions or anything like that, there will also be a link where you can book a chat with um, one of us. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Thanks. We've loved talking about podcasts and being on podcasts and having podcasts. So if you want to talk about podcasts, like Kirsten said, just give us a shout. Thanks again. Thanks for listening to the Six Figure Business Mastery Podcast. If you enjoyed listening to this episode and you are ready to leverage video marketing on all online platforms, or maybe even start your own video podcast, then you need to check out the Done For You and Done With You program at themarketingvaadvantage.com and take your business to the next level.